Ohayou gozaimasu, collectors. Well, today we're going to go over the uh, Aoshima Gretchen Series 11 set here. We're going to do an unboxing. I ordered this back in uh, December, and it finally showed up. And there should be a full, brand new case in this thing. And just to let you guys know, I bought it from this eBay seller, Toshi underscore trade. He has 1,300, more than 1,300 positive reviews. So not a giant shop. Not sure if it's a one-man show or what, but... Uh, Let's take a look and see if he packed it properly. All right. This is some serious tape. It's like duct tape. So that's good. It's a virgin box. So I think, yeah, this, I can't imagine any problems here. It's packed well. All right, so yep, we got bubble wrap. More, yeah, so this guy knows what he's doing. I would trust this seller. He knows how to pack things properly. Okay, so, if I learned, oh, interesting. Ser the Series 12 box had a sticker here to seal the case. But this Series 11 does not. So, interesting change. Okay, and then I learned that there's no pricing on the box. I was looking at Series 12 to see if it had it, and it didn't. Okay, I'm back here, guys. I stacked them in the order of the box, and you'll notice I don't actually have a chase car which is an extremely big letdown because uh, I got one the Series 12. I'm not sure if it's really random and you don't even have a guaranteed chase car in a case. So there's really no motivation for me to ever buy a case again. Yeah, that's unless, of course, I don't have any of these models. But I actually have a few of these models in different colors. So uh, it's just something to learn from my... Uh, lessons here I guess my mistake here it's not really a mistake I just didn't know so oh well I'll continue on and I will uh, unbox these and we'll take a look at the paint one thing I've noticed is the paint finish on these are generally nice in the case 12 only one of the 12 cars seem to have a paint blemish so we'll see what happens here now so starting with these two these are the uh, 1972 Skyline C110 models, body code C110, and uh, this is the fourth generation Skyline, and the fourth generation Skyline was manufactured between 1972 through 1977, and so this is the first of that particular generation. Okay, so let's get down here. I'm not going to bother taking them off the plate because uh, they're just blank. There's no uh, no details other than it's saying Aoshima and made in China. So anyhow, this is a nice dark uh, maroon. And there's actually a metallic flake going on in here. So hopefully I'm really close to the camera. We can see some sparkliness there. All right. Uh, so looking quickly at the stack there, yeah, all these cars again have black interiors. So it's really hard to pick up on the details. There are molded details in there, it's just hard to see. So this one has some uh, headrest there. You'll notice, well, I won't pull up the silver one yet, but here we go. We have the plastic uh, lenses here in the, the back. But the red is, the red reflectors are just painted on there. And there's an angled license plate there. Okay. So, I'm not sure if there's supposed to be like printing there saying like Skyline or something like that. It's just a silver, silver dot. Okay. Well, anyways, I don't see any paint flaws, so that's great. And I guess there's a tiny contaminant there, but uh, it's not major. I'm okay with it. Alright, so the silver one. Let's focus here. Yeah, look, looks good. A little keyhole there. Silver on that. It's hard to see because it's a silver car, but it is painted silver on that keyhole bump. There's a little recess there in the back for the trunk keyhole. Alright, so we got some top view. Yeah, this looks good too. Nothing majorly wrong. Okay, so the next two, we have the uh, four-door, but this is just a different year. 
it's the next year actually, it's a 1973 version, so it's the next year after the first one. So this is like a nice uh, champagne kind of color. I wouldn't say it's gold, at least under these LED lights. I'm not seeing any. It's, I would say it's almost like a tan. More more on the brown side than the yellow side. But it is a champagne color, I guess. Oh, so there's the difference between just one year. We have a totally back different rear end here between 1972 and 1973. So, just bigger giant lights in the back. And I have to guess that there's two circles here where, uh, you know, maybe the outer ring is the brake light and the smaller ring is the turn signal. Not 100% sure, guys, but uh, that's what I'm guessing. And you'll also see that, uh, at least on this mold, the uh, little circle on the C pillar, on this one is recessed. And on this one, it's sticking out. So I'm not sure if that happened on the real car. But uh, Yoshima seemed to change their mold. Well, obviously it's a different mold, but interesting. I'm curious, I may have to look that up later. So what's really interesting about this one is uh, the front end. So as you can see, how it hangs over here. If I could focus this thing. So you can't see, the, you know, any of the headlights from the side view, but once you get to the front view, yeah, there you go. It's really dark in there. Yeah. I'll try to angle down a little more so we get more light reflecting off this vehicle. All right, I'm gonna switch over to this maroon car, really dark burgundy color. Again, uh, it is is it metallic? No, oh, look at this. I guess I am. I'm not looking at the camera anymore, so sorry if it's out of focus. I don't think it's a. I don't think there's a metallic flake here. So look at these two. This this one is metallic. I think this is just a dark, translucent burgundy or something, painted right over the die cast, or maybe they primed it with silver, because you can obviously see that it's uh, like lighter here, you know, the edges and stuff. But it is translucent. It's a really interesting paint finish. But look at this deep gloss, I mean, it's super nice. Got the fender flares, giant L LB, Liberty Works, L fender flares, and details of the body screws or rivets. All right, so the next one is a Z. We have a Fairlady Z, 1973 model. Yeah, this would have been called a Datsun in America. Okay, so we'll start with this. This is a, it's not actually black. It's a really dark gray and it's metallic. I guess it's a cat again. There's some printing here on the windshield. I have no idea what that says. And then we have the silver side stripe here tampoed on. Unfortunately, it's not under the clear coat. So the rear end on this, just two lights, plastic insert lights. And what's interesting is how the, this LB, Liberty, Liberty works. I don't know, they chopped, I, I believe there'd be back glass here, you know, at an angle. But they took it out and put a vertical pane of glass in there. So, interesting styling choice. Wouldn't be very or aerodynamic. But anyways, alright, so let's move to the next color. And so this is a, kind of like a maroon, I guess you could call it burgundy. It's a little browner though. It's a browner color than the other two. I'll, I'll pull out the other two in a second, but you can see the details a little better on this one because it's not metallic. 
you know we got these pretty deep grooves here for the vent of the hood there and then uh, the plastic insert headlights and they don't have the clear covers that I have on a different Aoshima maybe if I can actually gather one of each Aoshima molding I'll do a video just comparing all the different molds but I think it's gonna get harder and harder as these things uh, become more expensive all right we got the two-tone paint which is cool you know the door handle here and look at that there's some yellow in there there is a roll cage in there so didn't catch that on the first one black interior so the first one yeah now I'm seeing it I wasn't looking for it but there is a red roll cage in there so, uh, the glass is so reflective the plastic I mean it's hard to see on the back because no lights getting down in there but it is there so quite interesting all right so the big draw for me was th is this car the uh, Sylvia this is a 1979 Sylvia body code s110 s110 and I don't have this in my collection so it kind of helped motivate me to buy the case although again I was really hoping to get a chase car all right so we have a regular turquoise I guess you would call this I'm liking this uh, hood there's so many vents and stuff vents going in vents coming up and then you got these uh, vertical ribs here on the hood as well so that's cool in the side skirt you got the two exhaust pipe tips coming out there now what I'm wondering about now is look at the side mirror on the bottom of this thing it's painted silver the back is not so I don't know what's going on there is it maybe not maybe it's not a side mirror but why would it be reflective there? I don't know. Weird. On this one, it's interesting because the door handle is painted black and then silver for the part that actually you pull with your hand. I haven't seen that double painting method on a Aoshima before. Big plastic tail lights there. And we have just smooth plastic under there. All right, so switch to the other, other color. Although it's white, so it's not as exciting, I guess. Just plain vanilla here. It is a white, not not ivory or anything like that, like in the my last video. Plastic uh, headlights there. All right, so I'm not gonna dwell on this too much. All right, so the next one you'll see it says 910, and uh, that would make this Nissan Bluebird 1983 year, and the body code for this is KY910, according to uh, Wikipedia. It's the last uh, rear-wheel drive Bluebird, apparently, and powered by an inline four-cylinder. So sky blue kind of color here. Again, uh, to the naked eye, it's a much lighter blue than this video camera is picking up. Oh, now the exhaust tips on this one are really nicely defined. Is it's I don't I don't know if that's black paint in there. They're so small, but uh, obviously it's it's nicely done. I think they just painted like the rims silver, and it's probably just black plastic of the the bottom of the the model. So, very similar to the last car. So let's pull that out before I forget. So, the Sylvia is this one, and then this Bluebird here. So I seem to have had a camera fail. I actually fi finished the entire video just to realize that it got cut off. So I'm going to pick up where I left off and uh, hopefully get better the second time around. Anyway, so where were we? Here we go. Uh, top view of this. You know, I'm liking the, the details of this car more, but 
this is so look how blocky it is it's pretty interest, interesting whereas this one does actually taper towards the rear and stuff like that so styling is pretty interesting take a look at the sides here yeah so again the the top car the 910 is very blocky whereas the 110 i, I really like how this swoops up it's pretty cool styling choice interesting so now looking at the back though that's really quite different as well this back end of the blue car reminds me of like a 84 to ferrari testarossa being that wide you know whereas the uh on this mint green turquoise kind of thing those real lights remind me of like a delorean hmm. i like these little vents here passive vents or something maybe they don't do anything so well, anyway, so that's comparing those two guys. All right. Uh, so, because the video actually already ended, I unboxed these already for you guys. This is the last uh, pair in the the set, and this is a Toyota Crown in, from 1983. And the body code, according to Wikipedia, says MS110. This is the fifth generation of the uh, Toyota Crown. You know, interesting information I found out is this the running longest running nameplate within the within the Toyota brand. The crowns have existed since 1955, and it was originally known as the Toyo Pet Crown, and they're still sold today in Japan. I guess it's their flagship car, and uh, these crowns they don't actually have the Toyota emblem on the front. You know, the two ovals, they have their own dedicated insignia. So, I thought that was kind of interesting. Very uh, utilitarian, super regular, blocky taillights. But, uh, you know, I'm noticing that I don't think any of these cars really have any paint blemishes. Not like uh, I found in almost every other brand I've, I've noticed. You know, I, TLV, I have a horrible 80% blemish rate with those guys. I buy a bunch of old Kyo shows and those maybe like 20 30 percent of those have paint blemishes granted they're pretty much cheaper cars but these are really nice whoever made these things for Aoshima they really know what they're doing when it comes to paint I'm very impressed I don't know why other brands especially brands that ca charge a lot more money can't figure that out why they can't just paint stuff in a like a booth a paint booth with no dust blowing around you know on a cheaper car I can understand but uh, when people charge 20 30 dollars for a car that paint should be perfect you know if it, if Hot Wheels can make a car for a dollar or a nice one for five dollars you have six chances to get a car right right if you're gonna charge it thirty dollars that kind of thing so sell the Pulled all the bad ones and only sell the, the nice ones. Can you maintain your brand reputation? So, okay. Uh, well, so that's really it for the collection there. I, I guess the, the general uh, roundup of my opinion on this is, first, I'm extremely let down that I don't have a chase car. That's, that's just horrible. I don't know if it's, it's an unrealistic expectation to to just expect a chase car in every case but I don't I don't I'm not sure if Aoshima even sells cases anymore I'm not sure what year the series 11 and 12 I think series 12 is the latest one I see on eBay I'm not sure when those are from uh, Aoshima they they're mainly known as like a plastics model making company so it's actually a random bit of information I found out is Aoshima dates back to 1924 and they started as an airplane research institute and then 1929 they started making wooden airplane models you know with all their knowledge and then 1961 they bought some plastic machines injection molding machines and started making model kits I couldn't find out when they started making die casts but uh, as a company they do a lot of other stuff so uh, toy wise they're like a toy manufacturer but anyways if you want uh, the best chance of uh, getting a nice paint job on your die cast Aoshima is up there but it definitely has their downfalls you know these solid rims 
no air going through the spokes. That's a big letdown, right? On a mesh wheel, like I understand, but giant spokes like that, this should be hollow. And then I'd, I'd love to see license plates printed on these things. It's nice that there is a license plate, but have a nice fake number like Greenlight does. Greenlight does a good job with putting license plate numbers on there. And then uh, on the bottom, they don't actually say what the car is. They just expect people to keep these uh, plastic stands to know what the car is. But I unscrew most of these uh, cars and put them in a display case. So then when I pull out my display case, I really don't know what the heck the vehicle is. So it'd be nice if all manufacturers just molded in what the car was into the, the base plate. So, okay. All right, guys. Well, if you have any comments, love to hear them. And uh, we'll catch you the next time. See ya.